This is the thoughtful type. As part of this podcast, there is a special section focusing on disability and mental health. And many of these episodes will cover the topic of autism, like what will be featured in this episode which I had a conversation with Vanessa Bob from London. She works closely with families and individuals in an engagement and ambassador type of role to help support and raise awareness of autism in her local community and throughout many different parts of London. This was recorded on the 30th of October 2019, please check it out. Vanessa, Bob, I know it's it's very much like out of the blue, but it'd be great if, okay. if you first of all could introduce yourself. Like okay. what, like what, like what you do? Okay, my name is Vanessa Bob. I've got three children. Um, they're 13, 16, and 18. Um, the middle of the child, Nathaniel was diagnosed with autism ADHD in 2008 and Michaela who's 13 she was diagnosed um, 2017 between 2018 with autism ADHD epilepsy um, but they obviously said she got severe receptive expressive language again I'm still trying to understand what that means and my older daughter Lashauna who's 18 she was diagnosed with moderate language difficulties in 2017 but um, they believe that she may have Asperger's but because she's 18 now it's been harder to get her as, um, diagnosed as planned um, is that with like funding, um, or, was, or, was you, or would you say it's just a just a lack of opportunity to just get it investigated? I would say because of the way she is, yeah. and because obviously once she turns sixteen, it yeah. was sort of like um, nobody seems to take it seriously, or they just felt it was a thing of she doesn't need it, she's doing well, but then what happens at home and what happens at school yeah, is very yeah. different. Mm. So even like last week, she went to the GP yeah. and the GP said that she will have to go to her college for them to um, write a letter of any concerns because she's struggling when it comes to certain areas um, that um, to a neurotypical person, they would just see it as that she's just probably um, not picking up um, certain sessions um, lessons properly but it is because obviously if it's taught a certain way she maybe struggle so yeah i would say yeah it's like a it set a set way she has preference to like mm-hmm. register reg, like a set way she's used to having like things things in like in the environment mm. the st- like structure of it or the familiarity and mm. of it. Mm. yeah and i think i think as well i suppose with her when I look at it, and I think if I didn't know about autism by speaking to autistic adults, autistic women, I think I wouldn't have understood what I'm seeing with my older daughter. But on the bigger picture, I just think when it comes to autism within the community, uh, the black community in particular, is it's been a different battle because obviously what people don't really realise is that autism does affect everybody the same. Yeah. But when it comes to, and I don't like using that word people of colour because, because that's a very broad terminology. Oh, I mean, but when yeah. it comes to people of colour, you would find the darker the skin is, um, the, where you come from, the area that you are. If you're in a predominantly black area, it may be, people may think it's easy, it's not, because if they see a child acting in a certain way, they're quick to judge the behavior, and even if you said the child is autistic, they don't want to listen. If you're in a predominantly white area and you're a black child, a black family, then there's another stigma attached because you're going to be in an environment where um, cultural, cultural elements are being missed because obviously um, the, the family di- dialect, um, the way they speak, the cultures will get lost and that way you'll find that nobody's going to want to um, associate with you because they don't understand about the family dynamics. What kind of, what kind of perception have you usually come across someone like, who does have autism? When that's dismissed, so if somebody obviously displays traits 
uh-huh. that reflect that reflect okay. like autism like what do you what do you usually okay. like find I, all right i would say if you're it's, it's always that thing of if you don't know you're not going to understand if you yeah, don't live yeah, you're not going to understand yeah. but what people don't realize when somebody says mixed race I always say to people, in early days, growing up, in my family, you see somebody mixed race as white and black. Yeah. Um, that's what people perceive. But when you look at the bigger picture, in 2019, I would, would probably prefer to say dual heritage because there's a lot of families that will be around me yeah. and they could be a white family. Yeah. You only just see the mother and that mother or that father may not talk. They may talk about their child, but they don't talk about, they may not say, oh, my mixed race child said just my child is autistic and this is how I struggled. Yeah. It's only till when we have um, family functions where we, you know, we do a family get together and we, you know, tell you, bring your children, bring the siblings. Yeah. Then you'll find that parent will have a child that is basically um, mixed race. Yeah. Now, when you speak to the parents, you've got some that are very open, some are very um, willing to talk about the challenges they found if they're broken up with the family and they're, they're, they're unable to, um, um, to share some of their experience because if it's, as I can say to everybody, when you're at home on your, with your family, everybody is able to gel and want to get some world together, even though there may be family, sibling rivalry. But once you go out into the bigger world, and if your child doesn't look like the majority of the community, yeah. that child may feel different. I've yeah. always said to a lot of um, people, is, if they say the first five years is a very important part of the child's life and their, their brain is like a sponge, imagine yeah. if the mm-hmm. child is mixed race, yes. they're in an environment where racism is, again, if you've never experienced racism, but yeah. the child is mixed race in yes. a white, predominantly white area, yeah. or vice versa, yeah. depending on which is a, who they are probably associated with, if the friends in the family are being racist, yeah. that on, that child who may not people in the, know the child is autistic, mm-hmm. that child will go into an environment and start saying racist terminology because of the environment they're yes, in. Yes, like mimicking, get, mimicking yeah, what so goes on in the... Mimicking, yeah, yeah. And then what happens is, is though, um, the child is racist. Yeah. But it, it won't be that the child is racist. It's, yeah. it's because of what they've learned by environment. Yeah. So for me, I say to everybody, be careful when you're around any child. If you know you're racist or you know that you can be very prejudiced yeah. and, 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 and you know that... You're causing, you're causing um, um, there's a rift in the household and you notice the school complain that the school say, oh, your child is being racist. You will say, no, it's not. But then when you find that the child is being diagnosed with autism, by then it's too late. So I always say to everybody, if you have got a mixed race child, if, you, if you're in a group, but you don't want to share it for whatever reason, because sometimes you could be with, I had one mother said, Nobody knew my child was mixed race because when I went in, in the group, that it was everybody was white. They were being very racist, or it may have been, you know, subconsciously they weren't sure what they were saying. Okay. But when they brought in the child at the event, it was like oh, because they didn't disclose it. So I always said to everybody, be careful how you talk about people, because it doesn't. When somebody says my partner or my child, how would you know their child is mixed race or uh, or dual heritage? Because a person can look white, yeah. but they may end up having a black parent or yeah. a white parent. Mm. It, it, can, it can happen. The, the, mm-hmm. Right, and a lot of people just look by what they see. So it's, don't judge a book by its cover. Mm-hmm. So my experience is, if somebody's autistic and they've grown up in a happy home, the child may not come out with nothing racist, would come from the household, they may get it from out on the road. But it yeah. always still comes back to us as parents is, what have you told it's obviously you told your child something, but it's not. It's just by environment. But the society, I feel, when you use that word black, Asian, minority, ethnic community, yeah. dual heritage families, I think, get lost because yeah. I, they're yeah. not included. So I mm-hmm. think that if they're doing events and they say BME, black, Asian, minority, ethnic yeah, community, yeah, it's mainly the skin tone rather than heritage the heritage too, as well. Yeah. Because nationalities to be Chinese white Chinese black black and, yeah. um, um, Spanish so if that family wherever they are are lacking the understanding of that culture 
how is that child one if they don't understand who they are of the autism because of their in their dual heritage community <laughs> how are they going to able to have a balance if nobody is being truthful about one is their condition because you have to they have to understand who they are before they can move on but people say oh they don't need to know but yes it's like it just comes across as double standards because of what seems to be going on here there's a lot of mis misappropriation people are associated by by listed as this and people getting misappropriated messages of what you would only associate with those people of that particular skin color when it comes to like autism like for like even a black asian mixed race or anyone with mixed heritage i i sense there's like a miss a miss a misappropriation as to what would you would you would you expect somebody to like discuss a subject like autism when there's there's a dominant focus on racial misappropriation and conflict I, I, I would say that if if say for instance you're in you're in an area and you're saying that you're sorting that you, you have a group and you say right i'm having an autistic group yeah yeah I just say I'm having an ASC, an ASC um, group, you know, everybody's welcome. Yeah. But if you've got, sometimes there's a family coming and English is their second language. Yeah. They're isolated already. Yeah. And people sometimes overlook it, say, well, autism is the same. Black and white agents are all the same. It's not. No, the, no. the diagnosis is the same. But yeah. it's when that family is dealing with the discrimination, yeah. um, they've got a disadvantage because of the language barriers, yeah. that family would just sit there and not wouldn't able to say anything unless they've got a friend to come and, and, and translate for them. If the organisation says, we cater for everybody, that's fine, but yeah. you have to make sure that the, the information is able to be easier to read. So, for instance, if somebody came... What, again, what people don't realise is that you're going to have autistic parents who are sitting in that um, in that group who don't even know they're autistic or they may have a, a condition yeah. because it's been left undiagnosed. Yeah. So when somebody says, we are inclusive, but are you including autistic parents? Because autistic parents have a right to be treated exactly like a parent of an autistic child, yeah. but... For some reason, the focus is always on the parent of an autistic child. So for me, if somebody's got English as a second language, if somebody I feel that I, I'm unable to understand their um, family dynamics, I prefer to know I can find another organisation and say, look, can you help that family? I can't do it on my own. I can't turn as I can speak for the Muslim family. I can't speak for the Jewish family. Yeah. But what I can do, if somebody comes to me and says, I've got this Asian mother... Um, but she needs to speak to somebody in Urdu, and I can say, oh, Punjabi, and I say, okay, I know somebody, or I'll go on Facebook, and I may do a call out and say, does anybody know in their area? Because, as I said, I know what it's like for me, is when I was struggling with my son, yeah. I, I couldn't go to nobody, because nobody believed my child was autistic. Did they, did they perceive him as, did they perceive him as, having something else because of his appearance rather than breaking him down as 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 in like individual stereotypes for his appearance all right or, i would say or by association he, i would right. say with my son he's 16 he's very quiet he doesn't like going no he stays at home but when he was younger yeah. before he went to residential school um he was the child that keep your child at home because yeah. they felt he was just uncontrollable yeah. they felt that obviously when he started to speak around the between <laughs> ages of five and six it was that I spoke him, um, there's nothing wrong with him. So when people used to make their assumptions that it was very rude to, rude to him, I would say they were rude to him when I look back because because he he, he was the child that everybody was quick to, to um, criticise the behaviour and then say it was my parenting skills, it got to the point I didn't want to go nowhere in the, you know, more because I felt that I was being judged. But once I started to learn about autism, then I knew that I could... Um, I could explain myself better than me just turn around and staying away from situations. But I had to be, I had to ignore the, the voices of the neurotypical people because I felt that one time I was listening to them and things got worse. Yeah. But once I started to engage and listen to autistic people from different perspectives, different communities, I took pieces from everybody because as I always say to everybody, just because your child might be okay, 
it doesn't mean my child is. So I had to yeah. learn mm -hmm. that if my son was on the bus and he wanted to sit on a particular chair um, and somebody said that your child is rude because you just stand there pointing to the chair, I had yeah. to be sort of like apologetic, say, look, I'm really sorry, my son is yeah, autistic. Yeah. And I, yeah, I know, yeah. but they say there's nothing wrong with him. Yeah. But then yeah. sometimes I would be very defensive or I used to have like a little card and I used to put, give it to them. So instead of me reacting negative towards them, I would say, here's a card and I'll walk away. Um, he was always judged. You know, nobody had nothing good to say about him. Yeah. But then as time went on and him going into residential school, things changed for him. And that's when I was able to um, um, to engage with him better and engage with a school that was willing to help me. But without that, I don't think I would have been able to um, help my son without being with the right people. Okay. How, 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 how understood or how, um, what do you think the awareness is like? So again, sorry. What's how do you feel the how would how would you how would you like um your your opinion on the awareness of I like think what the, like where, where where you work or how it, how it was back then to how it is now. All right. Of like autism, and like in general. I would say ten years ago, it was it was it was terrible because. If I tried to say I was looking for somebody within the black community to give me advice because I just wanted to connect with people that obviously understood what you know where I was coming from, I got I felt I was getting more support, more understanding from the white community. Um, it's only over the last three, four years I can say more black families are coming out. You know, in the sense of they're more willing to talk, they're more willing to. Um, to come out to activities but the one thing I lack is you don't find a lot of the black families will come together you know like on Facebook we know we don't come out in thousands and hundreds yeah. Yeah. <laughs> we come out in drips and drabs yeah. and I think people feel that they don't exist they do exist and yeah. I, I do feel there is a lot of discrimination yeah. when it comes yeah. to the black community yeah. with autistic yeah. children because yeah. Yeah. how can I put it People say it's got nothing to do with race, but then I can say I know white families who are going through exactly the same thing with me, and as much as I, I may do what I do, I'm still fighting a fight without any support. People don't realise I volunteer, I don't get paid for what I do, but then it's upsetting when I know that somebody's come to me and said, well, I get that help, but, but then when I look at myself, I said, but I've never got that help. I've had to fight for everything because... Um, yeah, I've always just had to fight. I've had to fight ten times harder just to stay, just to stay. It's set, you know. What's the word? How yeah. do I put it? I've had like to content, keep on fighting. Like, is it be a, be a more, like affirmed with uh, you've you've helped create like created some more stability, gain like gaining awareness, and obviously how people like view view your family, family members with autism or people you support. You've, you've you've fought for a long time but uh -huh. obviously in in doing so you've you've helped like 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 create some created some stability you've been able to enhance your own awareness you're helping enable other people to generate awareness so people are being informed each yeah. time yeah i think collaborating i think collaborating with other organizations is the key because the end of the day, the end, the end of the day, I, I can't do it on my own. Um, as I said, my experience has been where everything was always told, the services are not there, um, there's nothing wrong with your son, yeah. um, why don't you try this, why don't you try that? It's always, it's always where it comes to social services in particular is they just don't see there's a need. They just feel that... Um, just because my son is able to talk, walk, he can, you know, he can, um, what's the word, he can run, he can ride a bike. Yeah. So they, they, their attitude is, I don't need the help. But then my friend will come along and say, but my son is smearing, my son's nonverbal, he, he, he needs the support. But what she turned around and said was, is that spending time with my children, she said they need just as much um, support because... Um, their needs are just as great because our children would want to go out on the road. So it comes to looking at safety, safeguarding issues. It's looking at the sort of yeah. friends that they're keeping. Yeah. It's 
It's the <clears throat> social safety when it comes to being on social media, the friends that they keep. But the social services, the local authorities, the schools, they don't look at that. Or they say, oh, well, they're doing okay at school. But once they leave the school gates or college, what happens when they leave those gates? Because yeah. they need to know how to keep themselves safe. But that is what is lacking, and that's why I feel that a lot of young people um, that are getting caught up in the criminal justice system, yes, it happens to all communities, but when it comes to the media, when it comes to black boys, black girls who get caught up in gangs, knife yeah. crime, yeah. it straight away they just talk about the single mother, absent father, but then even if the child has a diagnosis, yeah. you won't hear about that, you just hear bad child, bad yeah. behaviour, people refer a unit, you know, they've not been in education, so therefore it's the parenting, they don't go back and unpick that if that child did have a diagnosis, um, who, who can you blame? Because sometimes parents can deny the diagnosis, but then at the same time you've got pe you can have some very good professionals and the professionals are being told there's nothing wrong with their children. You know, so you've got professionals who are fighting for the child, yeah. but then the parent is denying the advice because they don't believe the child is autistic because they don't okay. want to accept the label. And yeah. then you've got the parent who is fighting for that child but you've got the professional who's saying that you are the problematic mother or you're, you're over-exaggerating the behaviour because we don't see that at school. So it's so complex because every autistic child is so individual, but it's getting the local authorities, social services, CAMS, um, parents, professionals, society to understand. Yeah. Yeah. If you're on television and you just see a white family on TV, as a black family, Asian family, People of colour, they won't see themselves as that problem. They may say, okay, I understand, but it doesn't affect us. But we, we need to see more feel, of us yeah. on do you the feel, TV. Do you feel there's a reason for that? Like, you don't see, and obviously, people with darker skin tone represented with autism. There seems to be like a, a much more predominant focus on race association, race mm. association kind of conflicts and misappropriations rather than a person with darker skin tone black mixed race asian uh -huh. could have uh -huh. autism instead uh -huh. instead if depending on how their life like develops or whatever they're immersed into it's it's uh -huh. it's it's usually like there's a there's a there's a tag like at attached to race like it's their, their, their black or their mixed race heritage or their asian heritage is a big big part of their identity uh -huh. Rather than some some of some of art, if if they did have autism, uh -huh. it would seem to be taken a, it would seem to be sidetracked. Like it's it it's not as it's not as important. Do you do you feel the 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 community like like people of color like care enough about discussing a subject like autism? I wonder if that would maybe influence them to be like represented, like projected more, people associated with them being featured more. What a drink. I, think, I think if the people at the, at the top are, don't look like the people, the kind yeah, of people yeah, of colour, yeah. then they're never going to understand. It, the people in position, I wouldn't say that they're there just by tokenism. Yeah. They, they, the person should be in a position where they're in panel. They're there because they've worked their way to that position. They shouldn't be there just because they're black. They shouldn't yeah. be there because they're Asian. Yeah. Like if the yeah. person can deliver yeah. the job, mm -hmm. then if you're, in, if you're in an environment and you're saying that everybody at the top is white professionals making decisions on black families, then... Yeah. No, because at the end of the day, if I'm on television, they're talking about, um, for instance, or you talk about sickle cell, you yeah. ain't going to have a white person standing there talking about sickle cell because at the end of the day, how can you speak about something you've never experienced? Yeah. You can talk about it from seeing your friends if they're, in, you know, if they've had a crisis, but if you are somebody who's you know, you're watching television and you hear something about autism. Yeah. If it's always a white person portray talking about their experience of autism, we can understand the autism. But when you are somebody of black um, within the black community, if they don't see something that doesn't look like them, so it's like you could go to Italy, yeah. or you could go to Spain, yeah, and we're English. We go there. 
and we're watching the television, we're not going to understand what's being said. We will want to say, well, why can't we watch some of our? T why, why can't we watch um, a program in our language? I don't want to see subtitles. Yeah, but yeah. We haven't got no choice because we're in a country where we have to adapt to that environment. Yes, yeah. So yeah. why is it that when we're watching television and it comes to Autism Awareness Week, that when it comes to the programs, all we keep seeing is the same faces? Nothing wrong with that. But then. If the, if the generation are coming up and the young people are growing up, a lot of the young black autistic children or a lot of the Asian autistic children are watching television, you don't see no Asian autistic people. Yes, How yeah, can those yeah. Asian families at home say, well, it doesn't affect us? They need to see people like themselves to say, okay, I'm, I'm now sort of getting it. Or yeah, yeah. when we're having activities, we need to have events that are... Uh, what's the word? Because once someone says to me, oh, you're, you're having a black event for only black people. Incorrect. Anybody can come, yes, but you yeah. have to understand it's about raising awareness because of the cultural dynamics that the other organizations are, are going to lack because, as again, you couldn't go into a black event and start talking about, um, what's the word? A, a white person couldn't come into a, an event and talk about um, being black unless they're black themselves. Yeah. You understand? So for me, it's about everybody understanding by representation, people can actually connect to their communities. But for some reason, when people apply for funding, they say, we're running a BME um, event. Yeah. But when you go there, you may just have all Africans. But what's happened to your, the other communities? Yeah. You know, you can't say that you're a BME organization, but the people on, um, that are running the organization is going to be all white. Okay. So somebody okay. came and says, I want somebody who's Asian, but you said you're a BME organization. So they have to be careful what you say. Yeah. That if it's mm -hmm. not on the label, then yeah. you've actually lied to the family. So yes, it's yeah. better you say, if you are a BME organization, what you're going to say is, but we say that you're like, say, all right, in Brixton, they may say that we've got a, a high population of Portuguese and Spanish. So you may say we are a BME organization, but we specialize within the Portuguese and the Spanish community. But don't just say BME because it's such a broad um, um, term that's been used and it, di it sort of like it dilutes some of the communities and other d communities may not tap in like the, the like the dual heritage community yeah dual heritage yeah think that it's part so part of it yeah. yeah yeah they may not feel exactly. included yeah so that's why we've got to be very yeah. careful yeah. Mm -hmm. with when we're saying we're targeting i don't like disadvantaged families or free school meals it's yeah. families in communities that are not being reached to because yeah. when they see the post yeah. when they see the groups they go in and they say that nobody in there looks like me so okay. that family would move away okay. and then already there's a barrier so it's about making sure that when we're watching programs about autism we see different families different perspectives and what people need to remember is people sometimes pretty up autism they forget that you've got such a wide spectrum yes, that yeah. the ones in between get lost. It's either the child or it's a late diagnosis. Yes, so what about yeah. the teenagers, yeah. 16 to 17? People yeah. forget, you know, they forget about certain um, ages. And what happens is there's a big gap. And then when our children are being slipped through the system, yeah. and they, some of them are getting caught up in the criminal justice, justice system, the police, um, Puma Referral Unit, all these organisations are, are mistreating these children because the service is not there. What's your opinion on the actual, the subject of the quote labels? Was it, for me, it's a very interesting subject. Some people are quite fine. They're fine with people knowing that they have a particular condition because it helps uh -huh. people to understand and interpret, interpret them a lot. For others, uh -huh. it's like like uncomfortable feeling of having things attached uh -huh. to them by a title. What's your opinion? <sighs> Is that thing of, because you can't see it, it, yeah. it, it couldn't have happened, because you can't see it, it doesn't exist, but yeah. for me, um, as a label, I could go into a room, and I could be the only black person, but I just see, I just see people, but then when you look in a, a, a mirror, or you look in a picture, oh, I'm the only black person, now the person, how I'll probably be described to everybody, oh, Vanessa is the black person, but I've been, di that is the label, I am black. 
Um, yeah. If somebody says to me, oh, don't, don't accept your son's label, why not? How is my son able to get the services that he's entitled to? Then if I just said, oh, my son's got the behavior. But if you just say he's got a behavior, but what type of behavior that he has? Yeah. If you can't label or you, if you can't name what yeah. the condition is, yeah. How can you help that child? Yeah. If the child's got Down syndrome, yeah. you can see by their face. You don't, you don't, you don't, you don't have to say anything because when you, you know, when the doctor comes out, say, "Can I see little? Um, um, can Paul come?" They, they were no ready because on the phone it said he's got Down syndrome, so he was able to see the child's got Down syndrome. But when it comes to autism or anything to do with the brain, yeah, people yeah. keep on thinking the child is sick, they're yeah. ill, they're not yeah. going to get better. Yeah. But then I always say to everybody, the earlier the diagnosis, the early intervention to support that child. So yeah. by the time mm -hmm. they get into adulthood or into secondary school, they will get the support. But if parents keep on fighting that I don't want to accept the label, or you've got professionals saying that because that autistic child was able to cope, this autistic child can uh, will be okay. No, because autism is so unique to that individual child, yeah. it's like... Everybody seems to think having a label of autism is great, but for me, it's not about it's being great, it's being overused and it's, it's, it's missing the point of supporting the families out there right now mm. because how autism is being used like a dirty word. It's like we can't say the child is autistic. But yeah. then if a child had um, was a brainy, you know, that it was like a savant, you know, he's very gifted, everybody wants to know that child. But they're not interested in the diagnosis. They're only interested in the ability of what they can do. But they don't want to hear about the other side. You know, so if the child is rocking, the child is humming, the child yeah. is the child is in stress, yeah. and the people are saying, stop doing that, stop doing that, stop rocking. Yeah. But then how can you tell a child to stop doing something if you don't understand what is what, what is what is actually happening? World? Yeah. I've I've I didn't ask you earlier during our conversation as well. I've really enjoyed this chat with you so you ask, <laughs> thank you yeah. are you like like campaigner or like facilitator in your, in your I mean, role okay a lot of what has happened to me is bit is happened by um by chance okay. because I, it was just certain autistic um individuals or um organizations um just said vanessa you know we like what you're doing would you come to this event or um with the national society when they had a lot of um consultations and forums they would invite me to come down because i used to go to lots of the events in the early days and i because i wanted to know more and then i used to be a bit of a nuisance you know where we constantly write into the lamb of autism group in the early days not realizing that you had to be in the borough technically i think you know to to um to tap into the services if depends on the funding but I learned a lot by connecting with other organizations but then I felt as I said I felt there was nothing that represented my family my friends okay. I didn't mean that that's why I was just targeting it was everybody from different communities were coming to my event but in the early days I would say it was predominantly white fed families that that um, I connected to and as time went on um, doing a lot of the uh, um, consultations when it comes to uh, uh, the government uh, I, I, you know I would always want to do all the surveys you know but then again when you go to a lot of the events there was lacking people from the BME community coming forward and that's my um, my role I feel is trying to get more black families um, Asian families to come forward not to be shamed because if it's like voting if you don't vote then you're not going to be heard and the more we see more black and asian families coming forward at, at um consultation meetings forums then we will see an increase you know we can't do it on our own because as i said to everybody if i die tomorrow yeah who's going to be there helping my, ch my mm -hmm. children mm -hmm. so we have to we, we need more numbers we need more people to come forward don't say oh um nothing's going to change 50 years ago our children won't be where they are now. They'll probably be in a mental institute. They'll be locked away. Yeah. They'll be hidden. Now, you know, children, uh, autistic children now are, yes, they are in mainstream schools. It's sad that over 70% are in mainstream schools, but a lot of them are not getting the support they deserve because parents Stop. may not know what their rights are or yeah. teachers don't really understand really what autism is because yeah. they, they don't want to, probably they don't want to change. They may not have to cope with these children children as they may put it but they have no choice but they have to where can people find you 
Like, <laughs> so you're, like, your, like your groups? So you like, facilitate these groups? Well, at the, at the moment, yeah. I, I've, for a second voice, I've not really been doing groups okay. as such. I've okay. been mainly doing um, working in collaboration, okay. collaboration with yeah. other organisations, yeah. which yeah. is based in Norbury, Norbury, which is at the yeah. Cassandra Centre. Or you'll find where I do most of the play activities, which would be at the um, Tutin Leisure Centre uh, or Kappa Leisure Centre. But then, as I said, I do a lot of variety, working in collaboration with other organisations, so that yeah. that way, um, different needs for different families, different causes, so that there's certain things that I can't do, I would work, as I said, with um, other organisations just to bridge the gap. And with an organisation called Code One, it's where um, Be Beverly Mackenzie is looking at bringing other communities together. And what I'm going to be doing is bringing the autistic community together and the SEND community so that when they're having um, events, it is inclusive, but it's trying to engage so that we can support the siblings as well of um, autistic um, siblings. Uh, Vanessa, I'd, I'd, I definitely, I definitely want to chat with you again at some point in the, in the <laughs> okay. near future. Yeah, it's been fantastic um, talking to you. Definitely have you on this again and love to have a chat with you again in the near future. It's fantastic you've been immersing various different members of, 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 of your community where you're based yeah. to inform them about autism and helping them to establish ways to take action or build understanding and like challenge the perspective and enhance mm. it as well yeah yeah it's not easy, but thank yeah you. yeah it's very appreciated well, I, I, hope yeah. it was, I hope it was um, useful because as I said my children trying to keep my children quiet in the background when they're coming in and out of the room where I was if any if if anything would have happened I would have been completely completely understa understanding it wouldn't have created any hiccup or anything but yeah <laughs> Okay. Well, it's been, okay, thanks. Thank yeah, you so much. And we'll, we'll definitely catch up again. Yeah, okay? yeah. Well, it was lovely to speak to you. No problem. Yeah, bye bye. Yeah. Bye, bye, bye. Have a good night. Bye. Thank you. Bye.